So when monetary policy has got limited impact on the global growth recovery process, what could be that redominance of the public financial policy tools? You know, that was the moment in which, you know, the world was looking into the redominance of the public financial management tools or the fiscal policy tools. Then we had a lot of public financial management reforms. We had stimulus packages, you know, in that moment. But later on, we realized the importance of a proper fiscal policy and monetary policy coordination. Now, let's take the contemporary moment. This ongoing acceleration of the climate change crisis that's actually exposing a humanitarian crisis. And we know the vulnerability of the food security systems we know the vulnerability of the energy transition system so what could be that macroeconomic framework india should be thinking to deal with this global crisis so that's exactly what we need to look into this moment and recently i attended a meeting uh, in odi london my former boss uh, retin roy you all know about retin roy he was uh, the member of uh, you know, uh, Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. He was my boss. He was a director of NIPSP. So he invited me to his, he's a managing director of, you know, ODI London. So he invited me for that conference. And that conference was an eye opening uh, moment for me. The, the Adam Tools, the director of, you know, the European Institute in Columbia uh, University, he was the you know, professor who talked about this poly crisis moment for the first time so effectively. So what, whatever I have articulated right now, we can mold it into a term poly crisis. So this poly crisis is what I articulated as in times of war, climate, debt crisis, energy crisis. It's like a multiple crisis and we need to have a framework to deal with this multi uh, crisis or a poly crisis. Now let's look at the status quo. What is happening right now in India? Let's take up the uh, public financial management part. Debt restructuring is a crucial component uh, to deal with this poly crisis. And we are not facing a moment just like Pakistan or Sri Lanka just because we don't have a huge presence of donors in the debt market. We don't have huge external debt. So we are sound in terms of re reducing the external debt over time. If you look into the financing pattern of deficit, we know that the internal deficit is huge. And we also have taken a transition from synergy financing, that is the RBI through, uh, you know, this treasury bills and all financing the fiscal deficit. That is in, in layman's term, it's like a printing of money and financing deficit. We have taken a lovely transition from synergy financing to the bond financing right now. Now, to face this energy crisis, what is the articulation? Within this financing pattern of the fiscal deficit, a thematic financing is articulated as climate bonds. And we need to say that the sovereign bonds, which is earmarked for tackling the green infrastructure or the climate energy crisis, if that is working or not, we need to wait and see. But that's the way we responded through the debt restructuring within the financing pattern of fiscal deficit. So that's the way we articulate it. Now, coming to the bigger questions, you know, the donors in the external, when the debt restructuring uh, articulation, when that is happening around the world, uh, donors, you know, they tend to look into how much dollars are taken and how much dollars are repaid. To what extent you used it for the humanitarian cause or for, uh, you know, the non-productive cause doesn't matter. But in terms of repayment, it has to be at the right time and it has to be paid in dollars. Uh, you know, that's the articulation of the external financial markets. But we need to take a relook into it and ask the question, fiscal space for what? We have to ask the question, what is the use of the debt we have taken from the market, internal or external? As long as the lenders are only interested in how much debt we are paying back, the context really matters. We don't mind about why you are using or what you're using the debt for. That will lead to a kind of 
transition in the expenditure design of you know any country so that's the global uh, concern right now that the fiscal policy for what that's a crucial question we need to rethink rather than you know take the debt repay the debt at the right time use of the debt we don't uh, you know we are not we are we don't mind we are we are not we are we are not concerned at all that's articulation now among the global economists Oliver Blanchard came up very vocally responding to this and he came up with the proposition for this macro framework like you know if you have high debt you know you need to articulate to reduce your output gaps in the macroeconomic framework this output gap is a crucial variable and this output gap is also a controversial variable in the sense the output gap we measure the as a gap between your potential output and actual output it is measured in terms of you know in the native economy it is measured in terms of employment but in the context of india it is measured in terms of your potential output and actual output in terms of gdp and we know that the gdp methodology it has undergone a transition there is data fundamentalism and there are data gaps and these are you know uh, rolling into a crisis in which we created the debt numbers and we are now arguing about the way we are floating the surveys and the methodology is not correct the sampling is not correct but the reality is that most of the elements of the components that go into the gdp are extrapolated due to the lack of data so that's the reality with the actual output now comes to the potential output potential output is an absurd variable you need to create the potential by looking into the econometric methodology and we use the filters you look into the components of the cyclical and the uh, what you call the structural elements into it you call the trend as your potential gdp by taking out the cyclicality this is we what we uh, call as filters using hp filter and kalman filters and tau uh is this macroeconomic framework working which is based on the output gap because we are framing the policies both the monetary policy and fiscal policy based on this articulation of output gap then the policy makers both the finance ministry and the center bank they tend to form policies which are counter cyclical in nature but counter cyclical policy making whether it is monetary or fiscal does it work this is a question we need to ask especially in the context of poly crisis because these are the crises which are created it's not given so we need to look into the tools uh, which are required for tackling this poly crisis both from the fiscal and monetary policy perspective and another analytically if you look into another reason why this output gap that macroeconomic framework is not working another reason is uh, you know we tend to believe in business cycles and we tend to believe in business cycles even in the context of emerging economies but that is not usually the case and we have seen particularly in front of our eyes after the crisis after the covid crisis in the post pandemic strategies these business cycles are not operating perfectly and we need to look into the structural reforms because the dating of the business cycles as you know high and low points that doesn't work when the growth uh, point which is plummeting from the uh, you know early or the pre pandemic or the pre crisis moment may not be cyclical so that you know you are counter cyclical policy in terms of fiscal or monetary will trigger the uh, economic growth recovery process in the u shape back to the pre crisis levels that's not working because we need to look into the historicis when we talk about the economic growth recovery process because these downturns in the economic growth is permanent scar it's not just cyclical so that you put a magic bullet like counter cyclical fiscal or monetary policy tools and you get your growth recovery all right so these are the concerns related to the macro economic policy framework when we look into the economic growth now as professor shija mentioned if this is the crisis then what could be the instruments or the policy tools or the public policies we need to design to tackle with the crisis so that's a question number 2 now
Debt restructuring, I have highlighted. I have highlighted what Oliver Blanche has proposed that you have high deficit, that's fine. High debt, that's fine. Use it for reducing your output gaps. Then again, output gap is controversial and you're unable to work with the output gap reductions and that's not leading to the economic growth process recovery. Then the second magic bullet, which emerging countries, you know, now tackling with is let us focus on infrastructure because infrastructure is a wonderful way of getting the growth recovery process all right. So the second articulation is that, let it be the uh, accommodative fiscal space, but you use it for infrastructure or the capex enhancement, whether that is working, because in India, we have tried a lot of reforms, uh, not only in terms of the infrastructure, we believe that it is going to crowd in the private investment. We looked into many other structural reforms. Insolvency code is there. There are many other restructuring reforms we got into. But why the private investment is not picking up? Now everything else failed. So we need to see. And the overall macroeconomic uncertainties and the external uncertainties and the uncertainties in the global financial markets that's affecting the private investors' confidence. All possible or plausible internal domestic measures we have taken to trigger, but the private investment is shy. That's mainly because the external uncertainties and the uncertainties in the global financial markets. Now that's the case. What is the articulation related to that? The global financial markets and the global monetary macro policies. Here, an important question is what the Western world is doing in terms of their monetary macro policies. Let us take, for instance, the U.S. Fed, that's a center bank, and the U.S. Fed chair, Jay Powell, is on a hawkish mode. And, you know, when the Western world, especially the U.S., go into the hawkish mode, it has got its own repercussions into the emerging countries. And we clearly know that and only answer to this uncertainty is to have a, an interest rate defense mechanism. So how long we can do this interest defense or interest rate defense mechanism when that is going to affect the growth recovery process? Because you know that the interest rate defense by going hawkish is not working well with the economic growth recovery process. But if you look from the point of view of Jay Powell, the US Fed chair, he doesn't need to look into what's happening in the uh, emerging economies, but that's by you know logic and by ethic. Ethics, if you look into uh, you know the process which uh, you know should not lead to a beggar dying neighbor, that's the ethical concern. Otherwise, technically and by mandate, he's not. Uh, he doesn't need to look into what's happening in the emerging world because he was worried about or he is worried about his balance sheet and his interest rate regime. So, but how the emerging countries are trying to cope up with this? What is the macroeconomic tools or the framework designed within the emerging, within our emerging country, especially India, to tackle this crisis? So, we have gone hawkish in our interest rate. And in recent uh, you know, MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee articulations, and, and for the freshers, you know, I took a moment to say what is MPC. It is like the independence we seek in the monetary policy realm in the context of India is an operational independence, not a goal independence. In the sense, we focus on the operational independence by forming a committee with voting powers, that is the Monetary Policy Committee, and announce our monetary policy stance by the Monetary Policy Committee's decisions rather than, uh, you know, RBI governor articulating that this amount of policy stance. So that's the operational independence, but we don't have a goal independence because that goal, uh, you know, the price stability is a goal of the center bank uh, across the world because we have moved to the inflation targeting, which is again failing. We need to ask the question why the inflation target is failing. And today also we have seen the articulation that the inflation is mounting, not from you know the monetary policy variables, but from you know the non-monetary policy variables like structural shocks, or if you have a monsoon failure, or if you have uh, you know the structural or the supply side shocks in the economy. Now, now 
uh, sub disturbance. Are we okay? Okay. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, uh, when we have this price stability, the prime concern of the monetary macro policies, and when we have this fiscal policy remaining accommodated by high deficit and high debt, but there is a sense of internal inconsistency within the macro policy realm. In the sense, if you are keeping the interest rate high, and if you want your fiscal policy to be accommodative, that's getting into the public debt management, and the public debt management is going costly. So, so right now, what we are doing is we work with the advantage of the maturity structure. Long of the maturity structure in the sense, we try to buy more monarchy bonds and sell them shorter bonds so that the refinance and risk is also and we get enough space to teach the role of the new Kaha. But in the work, we need to look, look, look into it. And it is not only the case of the central governments, this is also the case with the state governments. They are also grappling with the uh, debt restructuring issues. And the, the subvention governments have more responsibility in the sense the 50 rules are given to them. There is no fiscal space in the sense that the fiscal policy rules are given to them. And there is a policy transition from discretionary space to the rules based fiscal space and monetary space. In the sense, inflation transition is the monetary space and rules, fiscal rules is the, uh, the space, uh, the rules based is, uh, in the articulation in the finance ministry. So, this is again related to the energy transition. Now we have to look back to the question of the climate resilience uh, growth path. Then this fiscal consolidation of the fiscal rules within the macro policy framework articulated by the finance ministry is linked to energy transition. How? We have articulated that, of course, you have a deficit of 3.5, that's fine, instead of, of 3, which is the mandate. But this 0.5 needs to be linked to power sector reforms. And we know that in the just energy transition, the trade now comes about, and we know that the next month, we have the COP28 in Dubai, and we need to focus on the fiscal and energy policy transition articulation. And then this 0.5 needs of extra borrowing space is linked to the power sector reforms. But, but the prices, if you look at the efficiency parameters of the financial and operational efficiency parameters of the power sector, the state governments have not reached to a level in which they can uh, confidently say that they have undertaken the power sector reforms. So that's a crisis. It is linked to the fiscal consolidation. And on the top of that, we have the articulation of on the and off grid energy infrastructure related issues, then we are, uh, you know, uh, having the deliberations with the energy transition group. There, the issue is when a, an emerging country like India, when we face the energy poverty issues, what kind of electric vehicle transition are we talking about? What kind of non conventional energy transition are we talking about? Are these environmentally sustainable? These are the questions we need to ask. Overnight, we may get into a non fossil world, but the policy prescription articulated by uh, the countries in the G20 forums or in other G7 or in any multilateral forums, are we able to deliberate upon the sustainable energy transition? Are we able to articulate about our energy poverty issues? So these are the questions we need to look into and incorporate within the macro policy realm. So uh, in nutshell, the policy maker, whether you are working with finance ministry or whether you're working with center bank, things are not easy this time. So the policy makers around the globe, they are grappling with lot of transitional issues and, and they are inventing or they are going for some innovations to tackle these issues. And this is a tough moment for them. And on the top of that, to complicate the issues, the political economy context is also very crucial. Political economy context, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it can be a polycrisis moment. And this is the time of, you know, war and other polycrisis. And on the top of that, 
within the type of the governance whether it is democracy or whether it is authoritarian regime the type of governance is also eating into the macro policy frameworks so how do you tackle this political economy context and as students when you are working with the finance ministry when you are working with the planning commission planning board when you are working with the subnational uh, you know finance ministries how do you tackle this political economy moment because that is very crucial because it is linked to the budget credibility it is linked to fiscal transparency and accountability issues so these are also you know from a practitioner's articulation these are also very important to be looked into and right now we know that we are going to get into the elections so when we look into the expenditure design of course the revenue stability is crucial these are moments of revenue uncertainties but when you look into the energy uh, when you look into the expenditure design are we getting into a pre electoral expenditure design if you are getting into a pre electoral expenditure design to woo your voters what is the fiscal space these are the articulations which is further complicating the technical macroeconomic framework so on one side the central bank they are still keeping that professional you know because political economy has not entered into central bank they have the tools to deal with the crisis the first tool as i mentioned earlier is the interest rate defense the second tool is the liquidity guidance they are doing that and within the liquidity guidance in the priority sector lending they are also incorporating the climate change related infrastructure so that's fine uh, so far as far as i am concerned the central bank is very technical the political economy is not affecting them so far but the question is should we uh, tell them to look into the political economy questions because this climate related crisis or the climate related risk and uncertainties in turn affect their technical financial stability issues so unless they go political uh, they can't you know deal with these questions but again the counter articulation is that that will affect the reputation risk of a central bank governor or a central bank chief so if you look into uh, you know central banks around the world the poly crisis uh, how that is tackled you know especially when when I, when i talk about the poly crisis why the energy crisis and the climate crisis is mounting uh, because of the importance given to these issues in the global forums and we need to get to the net zero level to tackle the uh, you know the global energy crisis and it is an international public good as as long as when the climate change is an international public good we need to get this articulation at the global level deliberations and you know that ecb has gone into uh, this climate uh, related issues incorporated within the monetary uh, policy reaction function bank of england has started the stress test so central banks are doing the greening of monetary policies but on the other side what exactly for the climate change the fiscal policy authorities are looking into they are looking into as i mentioned earlier the climate bonds they are looking into the articulation of igft the intergovernmental fiscal transfers incorporating an energy uh, or the green variable and we have 16 finance commission very soon uh, in november it will be constituted and what will be the articulation of this poly crisis within the igft framework we need to look uh, look forward to so and to conclude there is no silver bullet to tackle this crisis finance ministry is in crisis and central bank is equally in crisis and right now the kind of agreement we have come up to is that let the fiscal policy be accommodated to deal with the growth recovery process and we have seen the world economic outlook numbers that india is a shining spot or a sweet spot in the global realm in terms of the economic growth but we should not be forgetting the fact that the growth rate can be little tricky why it is a sweet spot why are the growth is uh, showing a uh, high numbers because of the base effect because we have limited like anything in the crisis time so from there you know it may be to the next level or to the high level but uh, if you take a look into uh, you know the levels then we need to uh, really ask the question are we facing a sweet spot moment or challenges are many and what are the challenges inequalities 
widening inequality so what are the policy uh, policies we need to you know articulate or we need to uh, you know uh, give we need to give emphasis to tackle this widening inequality is a important question because if you look into the benefit incidence analysis of the public expenditure you can see that there is a distributional inequality when we talk about the redistributive justice in terms of the public expenditure commitments so that's a crisis and now uh, can we deal with this from the taxation side Inter international taxation is also going through a transitional phase and we know the pillar 1 and pillar 2 pillar 2 is looking into the global minimum tax for the corporate and we have to reduce it to 15% so that we avoid this capital uh, mobile capital getting into a tax war so we are getting into this uh, pillar 2 when we talk about the international taxation and heterodox economists are also speaking about the wealth tax you tax the rich and uh, you deal with the crisis and uh, rather than saying no to the expenditures which are relevant for reducing the inequalities so these are the uncertainties and i leave my lecture i leave uh, my talk here with this uh, you know the moment of radical uncertainty around us and we need to be a little cautious and we need to invent new policy tools and we this is a moment to have a relook into the transitional fiscal policy and the monetary policies not only at the national level but also at the subnational levels uh, thank you and the floor is open for discussion thank you so much thank you lekha i'm sure that our students are eagerly waiting to interact with you now let's go let's move to the question and answer session participants can raise your questions or you can um, raise your you can share your observations also now this forum is open for discussion anaka anaka yeah sure she raised her hand Her microphone is switched off. 